want to thank you, each and every one, for joining me on this very historic conference. I mean, it's an anniversary. It's a big birthday. Realizing it's 50 years for us, it's 20 years for the handbooks and our publications, it's 10 years for our certification. And I really want to thank you very, very much for joining me. And I'm hoping over the next few days that you make it a point to personally introduce yourself to myself. Now, for those of you who don't know, I keep telling this story, I'm hearing impaired. So if you're behind me, I won't know it. So you have to come up and touch me. I stop, I look at you, and then we talk. And the reason I say that, the other day someone kept trying to whisper in my ear, and I have to keep looking at you to lip read. It's a little hard to, you can't whisper in my ear, okay? So we have to be straight on. So please, uh, make it a point to introduce yourself. I want to hear from you. I want to know why you're here. I want to know what your expectations are. And I want to make sure that we are servicing you to the best way we can. Now I would like to really turn this over to Margot and Roger. You need to know that uh, Margot Murray and Roger Addison were the two that had the vision and the tenacity stick to itiveness and pushiness to actually make this particular event happen. They bring between the two of them, both of them are past presidents, both of them are, on, have, are award winners, both of them have a long term of tenure with us, and they have truly demonstrated their love and passion for this society. Margot in particular is world renowned for her work in mentoring, and Roger is known for his HPT architectural landscape. You can check both the books out at the bookstore. But anyway, won't you please join me in welcoming Margot Murray and Roger Addison. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Greetings to all of you. And I hope that all of you have picked up your registration and now have the 50th anniversary logo button. Everybody have that? And we're going to cue that up to get it on the slide. And I want to publicly thank Marcy Pano and the Emerging Professionals Group for designing that logo so we could have it. Who came early and saw on the screen some of the interactive timeline? Some of you see that? This is another production of that group. We went back, way back in the history, to the beginning of the century, <laughs> of what was happening in performance improvement and the Industrial Revolution, and started with significant events in our profession, and then picked up our society in the early 60s. And Marcy and her team have put that interactive timeline together and you'll be able to see that in the community center uh, across the way, all through the conference. And what we'd also like to do is welcome additions to it, because this is becoming the digital archive for our society. So I, I believe it's also on the internet, isn't it? I think it is available on the <laughs> internet if you click the right place. <laughs> so that's good. So thank you, Marcy, and the Emerging Professionals Group. We also have some other people to thank before we start recognizing our past presidents on the red carpet. So the first group that we would like to honor and respect is these prestigious people who agreed to lend their names to the Honorary Committee <coughs> for <coughs> helping to celebrate ISPI's 50th anniversary. We selected an honorary committee because we wanted to do th two things. Do you remember what that was, Roger? We wanted to promote ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we... Joe Harley said I should do that more. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we also wanted them to promote ISPI within their organizations and also support their people coming to ISPI. I'm starting the clock now. And it was a way to connect some of our newer people to uh, the organization as well as to these people. So if you have a chance to see people who are in the advocates group or any of these folks, by all means, um, thank them. And if any of you whose names are on the screen, I'm not going to read them because you can read four times as fast as I can talk. 
Um, if you would stand and take a bow and let us thank you publicly, if your name is up there on that screen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and another group. Two years ago, this terrific team of members agreed to take on some important tasks that would help us to plan and execute uh, an appropriate celebration for, uh, as Judy said, this historic occasion. And these people have worked tirelessly and behind the scenes, and as Judy said, some stick to in the face of some barriers. So I would like to have these people stand, and I will say their names. Uh, Carol Haig, Carol <clears throat> Claire Carey, Jeannie Farrington, Mary Norris Thomas, Guy Wallace, Lynn Carney, Guy Wallace again, Don Papela, Dick Hanshaw, Marcy Pano, Jeannie again, Kira Rosier, and Eileen Terrell. And Roger and I had the pleasure of leading this team, having a few conference calls with them. So thank them for the activities that you're seeing here this evening and throughout the conference in celebration of our 50th anniversary. And I think uh, you know, it's been really interesting to see what Guy has done with all those video clips as we go along. Isn't it amazing? Guy has spent an amazing number of hours taking the archives that we were able to collect in documents and videos and that kind of thing and posting them uh, on the web so that we would have access to them. So as I said earlier, contribute to that because it is building something and maybe one of these days we'll have an, our own ISPI building and can have some of the physical artifacts housed there as well. And now we would like to recognize uh, for a moment the past presidents who have passed on. I wonder, do you think that if they were looking down here tonight that they would feel really good about what they started? Well, I, it's interesting to see that list, Marco. Uh, George Geis, actually, I was at uh, a conference and I had an opportunity, I was actually one of the first conferences I went to, an opportunity to spend an, an evening with him at dinner. At that time, we were doing roundtable discussions at dinner, and it was in, uh, I think it was in Louisiana, so it was really great. And of course, uh, Gary Rumler is up there as well, and they were great friends, as you know. And it'd be interesting to see what they're having tonight. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll honor and respect our past presidents who have crossed over. <clears throat> and speaking of archives, Last Sunday, I was trying to finish the New York Times Sunday Magazine crossword puzzle, and I checked my email, and there was a message from Rose Noxon, who said, the San Antonio chapter has found six boxes of things dating back from 1962. Can you do something with those for the 50th anniversary conference? So now we have a special treat for all of you from Dr. Gabriel Ofeich's keynote speech at the 25th anniversary conference in San Antonio when in 1987 we were celebrating our 25th anniversary. So can we roll the video clip? Look, every tool that we develop has its limitations. And I don't know what your 50th anniversary will be like. I hope you'll invite me back. I'll be 93. That'll be the year 2012. But I hope you will become more and more attuned to the developments, more so than you even are today. We're just starting to scratch the surface of artificial intelligence. We're just starting to scratch the surface of expert systems. We're just starting to scratch the surface of bringing about and composing the sensory modalities we need to impact on the learner. The concept of performance itself must be broadened to include because the, the, the change in the workplace is going to open up new avenues for you where performance is not going to be necessary on the job because automation will take over performance on the job and productivity on the job. But there's a whole arena out there outside of the job, life itself that involves performance.
of all natures, performance of children, performance of senior citizens, performance of adults in all walks and facets of life. We're in a world of change. There's a lot of volatility in our environment. We can't grasp it. I've been tracking 20 new areas of new technologies in the last, since I left you in the last 20 years, 15 years. And I can't keep up with them. I've been trying to communicate to myself first and then to others, non-technical executives, what they mean. But I'm 68 now. I was 48 when I was addressing the Cable Television Association in San Francisco. Do all you know where cable TV was in 68? Where I was castigating the media barons, saying the day will come when we can watch anything we want at any time we want in any form we want. And my daughter, who then was eight, she's now 28, I said, Rebecca, stand up. Here this little girl stood up with her mother sitting beside her mother in this room of 2,000, you remember best. Hold up your mother's purse. And I quoted Margaret Mead at that time. I don't know what kind of a world it'll be. Margaret Mead said, no man shall live today in the world in which he was born. Well, at that time I said, no man shall live today, shall grow up in the world in which he was born, go to school in the world in which he grew up, go to work in the world in which he went to school, and die in the world in which he worked. Well, a few weeks ago I was saying, no man shall be born in the world in which he was conceived. <laughs> but after attending and speaking at the Microsoft conference on CD-ROM a few days ago, another powerful tool, CD-ROM, and now, compact digitized video interactive, which is on a compact disc, 72 minutes of full motion. I don't have time to go into it now. Well, we want to come to me say, Gabe, that's no longer apropos about being born in a different world in which you was conceived. No man shall be fertilized in the world in which his father knew his mother in the use of his with the biblical phrase. <laughs> So the exponential rate of change and what's happening. Because we're breaking down these boundaries between disciplines. It was Alfred North Whitehead who said several decades ago, we teach algebra from which nothing follows, geometry from which nothing follows, philosophy from which nothing follows, sociology from which nothing follows. We've created these disciplines, they're artificial disciplines, but the trouble is these were very useful taxonomies and, and classifications and creations. There was a time when the course syllabi and the course curriculum was useful. But you can't tell the Society for Curriculum Development that it's out already passé. And what curriculum means anymore. I'd love to see the curriculum in some school which is only a set, a set of objectives. Behavioral objectives, of course. <laughs> But now it's time for us to put the spotlight on you, past presidents who are here, and some of the leaders of our profession and our society. So the first one uh, shared with us at the past president's lunch today how he became engaged in the society and actually began one of the first chapters. So, Roger, Dr. Roger Kaufman, would you proceed down the red carpet? And I hope there's somebody with you. See, I always get guidance. Uh, I, as I was walking by, I know Jan was saying, stand up straight, Roger. <laughs> uh, it uh, goes back to uh, 1962. I got a call from Gabe O'Feish. I was working at Bolt Baranica Newman in New York. And Dave was on the phone, and he said, uh, are you still dating that Janice girl? Said, yeah. He said, do something about that. She's good. <laughs> and he also said, oh, by the way, you just signed the charter for NSPI, and you're starting the New York chapter. Um, the old Virginia Slims uh, advertisement, you've come a long way, baby, is true of ISPI. Uh, while we're celebrating our past history, I just want to note that we started off on the basis of evidence-based 
uh, performance and research. And my hope for the future is that we will continue to more and more go into the scientific research basis of our field. And thank you for being here, and the future is everybody that's in this room and all those you will affect. I also think, wasn't he at the first conference as well? <laughs> I believe he was. Oh, well, that's right. I think he's been, I think he only missed one conference in all these years. I think he's attended most of them, actually. And by the way, do you know what the price of a hotel room at the first conference was? I'll bet it was somewhat less than we're paying here. Right. Well, for a double, it was $10.50. <laughs> What was the registration fee for the conference? I think it was eight dollars. <laughs> but you had to pay for the lunch. And Norm Crowder was the uh, keynote speaker. <laughs> so in San Antonio in 1962, they got a bargain. Right. And we get a bargain being here today, too. And how fitting it is that the next past president on the red carpet is at the front end of the past presidents who are here. Some of you will recognize Dr. Joe Harless and his front-end analysis work. Welcome, Joe. Yeah, I was president a long time ago. 1876, I think it was. <laughs> of course, I was only 17 years old at the time. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, late Gary Rummer and I used to argue about uh, who was the youngest ever uh, NSBI president. I don't recall what their resolution was, but we both agreed that we were the oldest graduate students <laughs> that existed. My term in, uh, uh, was in the mid-70s, uh, and uh, it was quite an era of turmoil in those days because we were trying and arguing about and debating uh, who we were and where we wanted to be. There was a small faction uh, that wanted to, myself included, that wanted us to move into broader out of instructional technology into what is now uh, being considered as, as performance uh, uh, technology. Uh, and I'm glad to, to see that happen. In any event, I'm also glad to be here at your 50th, and I hope to see you at our 100th. <laughs> A little bit later, I'm going to comment on the number of ISPI leaders who were grown up and trained in the Bell system and AT&T. And so we're going to skip over Bob Powers and uh, we'll go to 1983-84, Dr. Harold Stolovich. Harold, are you here? Harold had the good idea to invite someone who is also here as his keynote speaker. What else, Harold? Well, I made the good judgment of asking Margot Murray to be <laughs> our keynote speaker when I was president, and she was sensational, and she hasn't changed. I just want to mention two things. First of all, that um, way back when, when I joined uh, NSPI, 1975, I was a graduate student at Indiana University, and I and five others piled into our professor's car, Tiagi, and drove to Washington, D.C. And I don't know what they charged for a room rate, because we never paid, but we all <laughs> slept in his room. So, um, you know, that's one thing. But the other, I just want to say quickly, is that this has been a family for all of us who are walking across this stage. It's not just a professional society. So, you know, we not only have gained professionally through our association with ISPI, as you should, and I'm sure you will, but many of us have also gained personal families. That's where I found my wife, Erica Keeps, who's also my partner in crime and terrific person, my mentor. Just a final note, just on a happy note for all of us, is that back in 1975, the problems of performance were strongly debated and discussed at, IS at NSPI. And the same problems that we met then, as I go into the workplace across the world, and in the books that we do, are exactly the same as they were then. The good news is, you'll never be out of work. <laughs> I think during your tenure that the advocate program started. Was that the case? And were the advocates going to be actually called the advocates, or were they going to be called something else? What's the story behind this, Margot? 
Well, actually, Ken Smith and Paul Tremper said, um, we want to get this group involved, and they wanted to call them the pillars of ISPI. And I headed for my handy thesaurus and said, we must come up with a better word than that. So if any of the representatives of our advocates are in the room, you can thank me for being called advocates rather than pillars. <laughs> And also during my year as president, we cast a silver medallion, which I have back there in my purse because I forgot to bring it up here. But Mark polished his up today, and every person at the conference in 1987 got this ounce of pure sterling silver, which today is worth $31.42. All right. <laughs> Uh, we also, at that conference in San Antonio for the 25th anniversary, were welcomed to the city by the uh, sitting mayor, Henry Cisneros, who went on to become the uh, secretary of HUD, the Housing and Urban Development. So we got recognition from the city um, as well as had a fabulous conference. And as far as I know, only one person fell into the river during <laughs> and at that night at the banquet, everybody took the corks from their wine and uh, took them over to Chuck Martinez's table in case he needed flotation for the next day. <laughs> and now we move on to 1989 and 90, and so standing on the red carpet should be Danny Langdon. Where was your conference, Danny? Right here. Uh, we had uh, 1,500 people, as I recall, for a sit-down breakfast and about 1,200 for the banquet, which was uh, around uh, the Phantom of the Opera. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I, I'm really here to plead with Joe Harless. Joe, <laughs> would you mind coming to my presentation on Monday? <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> the reason I wanted to do that was in 1967, I came to my first conference, and only four years later, I did my first presentation that took about four years to get up my nerve to go there and give that presentation. And I was, as I was giving that presentation, somebody stood up in the audience and asked me a very difficult question. And I started to agree with that person. And suddenly, like a shot, Joe Harless jumped up and he said, no, Langdon is right. And he proceeded to get the crowd on my side. And what I'm suggesting to you is that's kind of what you got to do. You got to go out there and find some allies for yourself. Go out there and meet some people. Find yourself a Joe Harless. Find yourself a Gary Rumler, as I did. Find yourself those kind of people that you can ask questions of because they'll let you ask questions, and it's the best part of this society. You're allowed to do that, and if you don't do it, you're going to miss some stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Danny. And also, why don't we just give a round of applause to the members of the Emerging Professionals Committee who are helping with the mics. <laughs> and our next president, 1990-91, Mark Rosenberg. Is that right? That's right. OK. And he took our political connections one step farther than I did uh, with the city mayor. Yes, I took our political connections one step farther. I got George Bush to speak at the conference, <laughs> only by videotape. Turns out, though, this is George Bush the first. I'm too old for George Bush the second. Uh, but turns out, while we were holding the conference, he was four miles away giving a speech, and we couldn't get him in there. Uh, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, it was 22 years old, 22 years ago, last week that I was inaugurated president of ISPI in this room on that stage and had my six-week-year-old son on stage with me 22 years ago last week. And next month he graduates from college, so it's a pretty strange thing. But the interesting thing about it, the interesting thing about it is he had to do an advertising project. And in his advertising project, he decided one of the key advantages that he was going to pitch to the client was e-learning 
I wonder where he got that from. <laughs> uh, my, my comment to everybody here, really quickly, is that I find ISPI to be the most open organization anywhere. Um, I first met uh, um, Tom Gilbert. I came up to him. I said, I admire your work. He said, screw that. I know where we can get some free drinks. <laughs> and that's how I met everybody. About a month later or two months later, Harold Stolovich, who didn't know me from anybody, asked me to edit an issue of the magazine. So all you have to do is ask, and uh, you'll get the opportunities you wouldn't get anyplace else. And that's what ISPI means to me. Thank you. I think the, the, the next uh, person is uh, Esther. And if you were at uh, the conference we had in LA, which was Marx, Esther had a great experience. If you recall that, but she, how she introduced, uh, or how she introduced her conference? I do recall that, but I'd like to hear it from Esther. So why don't we invite okay. Esther on the red carpet? So this was not exactly what I was going to talk about <laughs> at all. Well, maybe, maybe they can catch, capture you later on and get the full oh. vote. <laughs> well, so as I was sitting here, this is not at all what I planned to say. And as I was sitting here, I thought, you know, um, I remember, because what I really thought I'd come up and say was, gee, I have a mic, I have to sing. But I, um, but I won't. But I remember, uh, probably a lot of people thought of me as a lightweight because I brought a lot of laughter, I think, and different kinds of experiences to the conferences and to the, the meetings that I ran. Um, and, and, but I, I am here to talk about some seriousness too. And so the, the serious part though was during my presidency, the era, um, and of course, the era doesn't mean it had anything to do with me. It had to do with all the people before and after and all the things that happened and culminated. We did, we were, my serious side, uh, we were defining what is performance technology. And with the great help of Lynn Carney and her great graphic talent, um, we defined the model for performance technology. We talked about how to market it and um, came up uh, with uh, a lot of help from Margo with success stories and then a video and then ultimately there was the human the book of human performance technology so there were a lot of serious things and a lot of the fun things that happened including at uh, at my banquet it used to be a banquet um, um, at my banquet uh, we had a musical it was the 30th anniversary and we had a musical with the past presidents performing so we had fun we did serious things and um, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I think the next one was me. I knew that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you invited a former president, Joe Harless, to give the, the speech at your bank. Actually, it wasn't. It was the Wizard of Noonan, Georgia. Oh, that's right. In drag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want to see that, it's also on the internet. <laughs> uh, that was one of the highlights of uh, my presidency. But also, I worked with a great group of people uh, during that time. Not only that, there, actually, there were three presidents that came out of that group as well. Uh, Carol Vallon, who's not going to be with us, but the, the next two speakers uh, were also on my board, which was exciting. And we sort of were laying the groundwork, and I think what Esther was saying, we started defining what performance improvement was, and we started laying the groundwork for a name change. And we looking at them several years later, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, we become the International Society. So it takes about four or five years to get anything done in this organization, but we, tune, but we finally get it done. Only four or five? <laughs> So who, who, was, uh, who was the next one? Well, uh, before we go to the next one, I just want to remind all of us that there were a couple of objectives for this session. One, of course, was to honor and respect our past presidents. The other was to focus us forward for the next 50 years and have some of the people who are newer to the profession, newer to our society, get connected with them. So how are we doing so far? Those of you who are relatively new, do you think you'll recognize these people who've been on the red carpet tomorrow and have a chance to connect with them? Yeah. 
And by the way, they keep saying they want to make a connection. And not only that, do you know how many connections have actually been made of husbands and wives in this society? I haven't counted because it's too depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, it didn't I happen to me. Actually, I remember one, one conference, Carol Haig actually had a session with all husbands and wives. You recall that, Harold? <laughs> Erica? <laughs> and Carol, do you recall that? And the only person who wasn't married was Carol. <laughs> <laughs> well, one uh, partner in those pairs is next on the red carpet, Kathleen Whiteside Langdon. Sorry. Um, the thing about ISPI for me and the orientation I always had really was organizational performance rather than individual performance. And so it really was no surprise that the year that I was president, we had a number of performance challenges. One was financial because we were out of money. Second one was planning. There, were, there was nothing in place for the upcoming conference. And the third was a personnel issue because our then executive director uh, had a terminal illness and so we needed to replace him. So that year, I pulled out my handy dandy performance technology handbook, figured out what to do, worked with a number of people, many of whom are still here, and we were able to have a very successful conference in San Francisco. We replaced, we had a fine conference, and we replaced our executive director. So I had the opportunity to really understand that, you know, it's almost a cliche about crisis and opportunity and Chinese symbol, but it really did become an opportunity for me to grow enormously, and it was kind of a rocky way, I'd say, to start a marriage, because I was a bride at that point. But nonetheless, I thank the society for giving me all of those opportunities. And we've alluded to NSPI, ISPI, and some of the iterations that the name of the organization has gone through, but I think our next person on the red carpet, Bill Coscarelli, may share some of the information from his year about the name change. I think it was starting at that time. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, thanks so much. On your mark. I, uh, I came to ISPI when they had a vice president of publications, which was my main interest, and was really looking forward to growing that publication relationship, which has really, I guess, come to fruition through many others. But Kathleen was right. It was a year of transition and surprises. Um, when she said things were sort of quaky, I'm, I, I'm here to tell you that I met our executive director one day, and he showed me the the voice machine we had, which was a tape recorder in the bottom of the utility closet. And uh, our books were being done with paper and pencil. And so it became, uh, and we had to find a new executive director. And so all of those things uh, that I hadn't expected, or Kathleen's board had expected, it all came to pass. And uh, the boards, I was really pleased, the boards all did the right thing. We ended up uh, with an executive director selected, uh, who was number one out of 211 candidates. And I got the pleasure of spending a year training him and uh, developing a relationship with Rick Battaglia. And, uh, and it really wasn't until Margo called me about this that I was thinking about all that transition and all had gone on. And then I realized that I'm, I am now uh, the answer to a trivia question. And that is, who was the last president of NSPI? And I was the last president of NSPI. And I thought that's so symbolic of the changes that, that had happened in the uh, chrysalis that it was and the uh, butterfly we will soon become. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, another piece of trivia, this going back a few years, remember what uh, the first society was actually called? Yes, I do. And there was a lot of discussion about that because the National Society for Programmed Instruction 
generated so much dialogue at every conference about whether programmed was spelled with one M or two. <laughs> heated debates about that. And we still are talking, we still have heated debates. <laughs> well, we do, but not about that right, issue, right. thank goodness. <laughs> so now we have a name change. And I think Carol Vallon, who's not with us, had that name change. And we've been now the International Society for Performance and Improvement. Right. The in between was performance and instruction, right. which I think Joe Harless and somebody else used to say that's like saying the Society for Transportation and Bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Carol wanted us to mention too that it was during her term that the functional officers were changed from a director or a vice president of a specific function to having them all as directors. Um, that was during the 1995-96 term. And somewhere along there, you got hired as director of HPT. I did. I worked for them almost 10 years. And now I'm not working for them anymore. <laughs> they, that, but they, wait, they wait, keep wait, dragging wait, me. Wait, I know, maybe I should have re re that. You're not working for them anymore? Right. What have we been doing for the last two years? I know. <laughs> or within the last three days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And back on the red carpet, year 2001-2002, Dr. Judy Hale. I, I just have a few comments to make. First of all, I'm one of the few that's been up here twice, okay? Uh, Tiagi also was per served as president two times. So if, you, if, so if you feel like you're getting an echo here, you're wondering, it's because really, I've been in this position twice. What I'd like to share with you is when I was asked to run for office, I said in 2000, I said I would, but you can't have any issues. I want an easy term. I don't want any problems. I don't want any surprise. Oh, everything's fine, Judy. Everything's fine. Not a problem. Don't worry about it. I was no sooner elected than the president before me, Dale Brethauer, who's unfortunately not able to join us this evening, said, oh, by the way, Judy, since you do work in certification, do you think you could build us one? That was true. That was true. So here I was elected to create a certification. And you need to know that when I came into that role, I actually thought we were going to develop a certification for instructional designers. That was my vision. And I convened this particular group of people, people who hire us, and you know what? They completely changed it around. It was sort of like transportation and bicycles. They said, no, we want somebody, to, we want a certification for people who actually improve performance. And that's how we got to the CPT. So we're actually celebrating our 10th anniversary of that. But I want you to know, I'm not going to be making a third trip. I'll be real clear about this. And thank you very much. And next on the red carpet is one of the presidents, uh, one of the few presidents actually, who came, um, became president of ISPI from the C-suite in a major corporation. So please welcome Dr. Jim Hill. Well, thank you very much for letting me stand here for a minute with the uh, other past presidents. I, too, wanted to change the name of ISPI, and actually it was going to be pretty simple. We could still stick with ISPI. I was kind of shooting for intergalactic. Uh, <laughs> but everybody gave me a hard time because we couldn't get a chapter on Pluto or something like that. Uh, for me, being president was just a great opportunity to uh, bring a corporate view to what we often do, maybe lower down into the, in the organization, but also maybe set the stage for others who really want to look at sh helping shift the mindset of people who make stuff, sell stuff, and count stuff. And as the president, my objective during that uh, very, very quick year was to help all of us find the way to do that, help push that message out through moxie or whatever it was, but also kind of get the message out that what we have here, and if you're new here, uh, this will be a great discovery if, you're, uh, if you've been around for a while, just be a reinforcement. We have the methodologies 
tools, and resources to get anything done. And we can really reshape the way executives see performance of their organizations. And that was really the, uh, the highlight of uh, my presidency. So thank you very much for letting me be here. And this next person hardly needs an introduction with all of the work he's been doing on our team to uh, bring the archives and artifacts into a shape that we could all um, experience them and enjoy them. So, welcome to... But, you know, somebody asked me the other day, though, does he have a job? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think he works for ISP. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Wallace, welcome to the red carpet. I thought your introduction was going to include asking me what was my uh, most significant uh, occurrence during my term as presidency. And it actually started when, before I became president-elect, I had planned on running. Didn't know if that was going to uh, happen for me or not. But I asked the late Gary Rumler back then in 2002 if he wouldn't mind me reviving a performance improvement journal article of his that he published in 1983 after one of our conferences and he had gotten into a big dialogue at the conference about the definition of human performance technology. And his 1983 article, he suggested that rather than trying to define HPT using a paragraph or two, that we define it in terms of the technology domains, what he called technology domains. Uh, he agreed with me that, uh, yeah, maybe 20 years later we could start something like this and maybe we get enough traction to do so. And so we began a society-wide effort where we encouraged people to write in and tell us what they thought about what HPT was and what it wasn't, what it was including. There were people who were worried that we would narrow HPT down to something too narrow and what I wanted was a broad tent something that would embrace people who practice Six Sigma and Lean and such so they would feel that they were a part of human performance technology, um, that it would become something easier to sell and promote in, in terms of exactly what is included in HPT. So we began that dialogue and it resulted in the definition of seven, not technology domains, but professional communities. Now the professional communities have kind of come and gone since 2004 when it, they, they came out, so they didn't live a very long life. But if you'll look at page 15 of your program, you'll see that the <laughs> seven technology domains still continue today, and they are the names of the tracks of this conference. It's been an exciting ride. This is my 31st out of 33 conferences, and to those of you who are newer to the society, that I hope that you will continue to come and to share, and to uh, help the development of all others. Thank you. I believe the next president, uh, we always had a joint conference the next time when we were in San Francisco with IFTDO. Uh, you had some connections to IFTDO, and so did I. Actually, I was president of IFTDO that year, and you'd been a long connection with them as well, hadn't you? We're gonna talk about our uh, border-breaking members in just a little bit, because Claire Carey, our next person on the red carpet, really focused on the I in ISPI and included not only international, but inclusion, innovation, and integrity. By now, it's clear to all of you that we are serious professionals who do serious work, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> don't go there, some of you, about why I have this on my head. I wanted to share a story with some of you who may be new. So think back to those who were with us in 2007. We had our conference in San Francisco. We shared it with IFTDO, the International Federation of Training and Development Organizations. So we had about 1,400 attendees from all over the globe at that conference. 
So Roger and I thought we should bring in a little levity, a little cultural inclusion, and we planned to have a 50-foot Chinese dragon enter into the opening event with fireworks and songs and clapping and to lead us to our new community center. So Roger and I are standing on stage and I get this The dragon is dead. <laughs> I go, what? I go, the dragon hit his demise on the way to the conference. There's no dragon. So what do you do when you have 1,400 people waiting for this huge celebration? So without missing a beat, we simply turned and said, oh, and now Tiagi will lead everyone out of the opening center and take us to the community room where we can have refreshments. So the moral of the story to all of you is, when you come to an ISPI conference, be assured you won't be dragon. <laughs> Actually, that conference uh, is in my fond memories, too, because it was the 25th anniversary of my firm, and we invited the IFTDO board members and the ISPI board members on a sunset cruise in San Francisco Bay. I remember that, actually. You remember that? Do you remember that was a full moon that night? It was a full moon. Maybe that's why Claire was dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> and next on the red carpet, uh, Jeannie Farrington. There's an X. Instructions. Okay, <laughs> I have an X and instructions. So I want to know something from all of you. How many of you, this is your very first ISPI conference? Raise your hands, please. Okay. Please give these people a round of applause. Now, you can tell that we're going a little bit down nostalgia lane here. This is our 50th conference. Some of us are celebrating more visibly than others. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun here. And we're also very serious about our technology and what we do. So it's really a pleasure to be part of this past president's cadre. And I want to ensure all of you who don't know all of us that there's only three to go after me. <laughs> But I just want to encourage you, this is a wonderful society where, as someone said earlier, you can come up to anybody and talk to them. None of us are particularly standoffish. We're delighted to talk about what it is that we do and we want to share it with you. And that's what the conference is all about. So I encourage you to have a fabulous conference and to learn as much as possible and study as much as possible because this is a huge field, so much to learn. And all the people I know who are the very best at this are still learning about it every single day. So thanks for coming. One of the things that people don't know about ISB also is that our roots started in the military. I was just thinking about that because I worked for the Air Force at one time, but our next president, Matt Peters, was active military, I think, when he was president. Welcome to the red carpet, Matt. So this is kind of like walking down the plank, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'd like to kind of build on what uh, Jeannie was saying. I think one of the big themes you've heard from everyone who's come down this carpet is that this is really our professional home. And we've talked about the past a lot. Really, I think the issue is about the future. And I had the opportunity to be on the board really during the Great Recession, if you remember those fun times, and it really gave us the opportunity to continue a theme that had been going through many, many boards was thinking about what is really the most important piece of ISPI. And it's the members, it's the people, it's the opportunity, as many of my predecessors have talked about, to sit and chat and talk with others in the profession and learn from them in a very collaborative fashion. So what really came from me in my time as president, the enduring pieces, were the things tied around that. We did have the opportunity to bring in April Davis as our new executive director. But most of the work really was looking at what is the future as far as working international, working with the chapters, and working with the emerging professionals. So one of the things that really has come out of that time are the, the folks like this, the emerging professionals, 
in the university case study, which you're going to see several times throughout the conference. And we think that's the future, and we would like to welcome everyone here to continue and join us in this future. Thank you. Uh, the next, a couple weeks ago, the next president, I got a wonderful brand new book from her that will be in the bookstore. Darlene Van Tim has right. a new book. Yes. Welcome, Darlene. Here we go. I'm on the X. I think you can tell that we always focus on the future. That's kind of our history. And we're quite flexible about including new things while we keep the old things. And I think you can see that that's where we're going, and that's where we'll be 50 years from now. My year, um, as I think you could tell from Bill Coscarelli and um, Whiteside, what's her, Lang, Whiteside, yeah, Catherine, I'm sorry, Catherine Whiteside, was that when we get a new executive director, there's a transition. And so my year was to work with April to reform the society. We had 2008 that kind of hit us, but the impact of it often hit in 2009 when people no longer had the money for new memberships and that sort of thing, new technology. People could no longer come to conferences and other things. So um, we all worked together as a board. We continued that focus on um, international, but we also focused on academics because it's so important. If we're going to be evidence-based, we have to do solid research. And so we continued that, and uh, I think the organization is still thriving. And as you all consider, do you, are you all visualizing yourself walking with this whole red carpet for the <laughs> 75th anniversary? I hope you visualize all these things so that you consider yourself a leader, because that's how you really grow, and that's how you really learn, and that's how you really contribute. So thank you to all of you, our future leaders, um, for coming to the conference and adding the energy today. I believe the next conference, we were back in Orlando again. And uh, I was uh, walking down the area, and I said, hey, Mickey. <laughs> and everybody turned around. <laughs> And our next guest is? Mickey Lane, <laughs> not Mickey Mouse. <laughs> well, thank you all. And it looks like I actually am the last one up here. Um, I've done a lot of education over my life, and including master's, PhD, and stuff. But ISPI has actually given me my true professional development. And I hope that's going to be the case for all of you as well. What I've learned over the 25 years of being a member, and my first conference was the San Antonio conference, uh, where it was the 25th anniversary. What I've learned has helped me grow and helped my clients grow as well. And that's something that you have to look forward to for all of the people who are new here, is the opportunity to grow and learn new things that you can pass on to your clients as well. As far as my own presidency was concerned, there were two things that actually happened that were things that I was proud of. One was we finally got the committees of the society to align their goals with the goals of the society. So that seems like, that's pretty amazing. It took, what, 50 years for that to happen? Um, but the other thing as well, and I'm just going to go back to what Roger Kaufman mentioned when he left the stage, he was talking about the fact that they started with research and let's keep doing it. Our conference was the first conference and I have Harold Stolovich to thank for that, to push me on and work together with it. We created the first research to practice day, which is now hopefully going to be an ongoing aspect of our society and continued conferences. So thank you for the opportunity to serve, and it's been great, and enjoy the rest of the conference. You know, Margo, uh, we are the International Society, and I think that we've had conferences outside of the United States, and now we're in Canada, and there have probably been some other people that are familiar with what they've worked, they've done. 
This is actually our fourth conference in Canada. We've been in Montreal and twice in Toronto and once in Vancouver. And actually, I had the pleasure internationally of introducing ISPI to the International Federation in 1981 in Dublin, Ireland. And you and Clayton Lloyd have both been presidents of IFTDO. Up to now, I'm the only woman who's ever chaired the board of the IFTDO. And guess what? Carol Panza is chair-elect of IFTDO and will be... So some of the people who've helped us to broaden the borders of our profession uh, geographically include uh, people who've been active in IFTDO, you and Rick and Steve Kelly and Mari Novak, Clayton Lloyd, Carol Panza, and Christine Marsh currently represents ISPI on the International uh, Council and Board. And in addition, the European, Middle East, and Africa organization, Carol, has supported nine of their conferences in eight different countries, which has brought um, our ISPI technology and culture to areas of the world where those people might not have been able to travel to an ISPI conference. And you've worked with Bilia. Bilia in South Africa. In South Africa. Uh, Mariano uh, Bernardez and Roger Kaufman and Luis Gasparotto in Latin America, as well as Yugi Sakamoto, who uh, has um, introduced ISPI in Japan and they've formed a Japan chapter. He's now talking about organizing another Tokyo chapter. And in Korea, Korea, Kenyam Sang, Kenyam Sang, and has been the ISPI Asia founder and market representative, and is now IFTDO's global PR representative. And here we are in Canada with a truly international organization. Thank goodness for those of you who changed the name some time ago. And I, I just have to say one personal thing, may I? Sure. <laughs> I think that AT&T, the Bell System, should get an award for having grown the presidents. Harry Shoemaker, Glenn Valentine, Margot Murray, Bob Powers, Fred Wells, Char Cypher Wells, Mark Rosenberg, all presidents of ISPI, all gained our skills in the Bell System. And other board leaders, Catherine Keeler, Judy Kirkhorn, Jay Alden, Ray Svensson, Pat Kaloran, Bob Carr. Remember any of those? Good organization. So, uh, at least it was before divestiture. <laughs> <laughs> and now, don't we have some questions for them? Sure. Okay. The first question that we have is that, uh, who has been a president of ISPI? Would they all stand? Or NSPI. Yeah, NSPI. Or ISPI. And would you remain standing, please? Remain standing. Remain please. standing. Now, who has served on an ISPI or NSPI board? Stand, please. Stand, please. And uh, who are ISPI advocates? Would they please stand? And what about chapters? How many of you have been an officer, director, committee chair at the chapter level? Please stand. And I wonder who's published internationally or, or in our journals, or who's published about performance improvement? Would they stand? Anybody who's published an article, a book about us? I was wondering also, who's from non-North America here? Yes, would you please stand if you're from outside North America as well? And we are meeting in Canada. I wonder how many Canadians we have How here. many Canadians are in the audience? <laughs> oh, Canada! See, Roger, it's just as I expected, that 
Not only were we honoring the past presidents this year, but we are recognizing the emerging talent in the organization and that this organization is great because everybody contributes in one way or another. And now that you're all on your feet, how about okay. let's continue the fun? Okay, that sounds good can to me. Can we do that? That sounds fine. Is there any place we can get food or drink? I think if we probably listen to the music and go out that door, you may find hors d'oeuvres and drinks. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us.